Welcome to Fatal Fat Fridays, where we flex our brains and talk about diet culture on Fridays. My name is Brittany Howard, and I'm a blunt dietitian and an ex-dieter, and I'm here to talk to you today about the dangers of dieting. Diet culture has become a staple of our society, and it often controls our choices because as a society, we have it ingrained in our brain that being thin equals being healthy. Spoiler alert, that's false. So let's fire up our brains and our metabolisms, and let's get into today's topic, the Nordic diet. Also known as the New Nordic Diet or the Scandinavian Diet, this diet focuses on whole foods from the Nordic regions rather than the Mediterranean regions like Norway, Denmark, and Iceland. It focuses on plant-based and seasonal local foods, which is a key driver in this way of eating, while also choosing the foods from that area that are high protein that contain complex carbs and healthy fats. So it's very similar to the Mediterranean diet, but the fat in this diet is canola oil, which has less saturated fat than extra virgin olive oil. So they're focusing on foods of their region, primarily with canola oil. This diet focuses on consuming produce, whole grains, fish and seafood, high quality meats, and wild foods like mosses and mushrooms. Focusing on the whole foods and fruits and vegetables can have positive health effects. We know that, like reducing inflammation, lowering cholesterol and blood pressure, and reducing the risk of type 2 diabetes, cancer, and heart disease. It can also promote weight loss or maintaining weight if this is, you know, a newer change for you. So specifically, this diet encourages locally grown sources. Whole grains, um, they want you to consume things like rye, barley, oats, fruits, with a big emphasis on berries. Vegetables, including root veggies like beets, turnips, and carrots. Fatty fish like salmon, tuna, and sardines. Low-fat dairy and legumes. Eggs, cheese, and yogurt and game meat are all allowed in moderation. And it's recommended to avoid red meats that aren't game meat. Alcohol. I guess in those regions, they don't drink that much alcohol. Foods with added sugar, processed meats, high salt-containing foods fast food, and sweetened beverages. So as for research, a 2013 randomized controlled trial compared to the Nordic diet, compared the Nordic diet with an isocaloric control diet that didn't seem to set limits on meats, sweetened sugar beverages, refined grains, or saturated fats. So participants in the Nordic diet group experienced an improved lipid profile and reduced low-grade inflammation over the 18 to 24 weeks they were followed. That's pretty cool, that's pretty good. And then in 2014, a study looked at the effects of the Nordic diet in subjects with a mean BMI of 30.2 and a mean waist circumference of 39 inches. Participants following the Nordic diet lost weight and those with the obesity reduced their blood pressure. All right. And in one study, they followed 147 obese people and they instructed them not to restrict calories. And those on the Nordic diet lost 10.4 pounds while those eating a typical Danish diet lost only 3.3 pounds. However, in a follow-up study a year later, the Nordic diet participants had gained most of the weight back. And then there was another six-week study supporting the weight-reducing effects of the Nordic diet, as the Nordic diet group lost 4% of their body weight compared to those on a standard diet. So again, it's similar to the Mediterranean diet, but it focuses on canola oil, which in the United States is actually overly processed. And the, and the antioxidants are primarily removed. So here it's not as good for us. The studies seem to be very limited. They're smaller in the amount of people that they followed. There's limited information that I pulled about the control versus what they were asked to do um, for the intervention. I'm sure you could look that up more. But overall, we have to have appreciation that the promotion of whole grains, dairy, protein, fruits, and vegetables while limiting alcohol, red meats, and added sugars is the focus here. Um, we know a lot about the Mediterranean diet, and they're, I mean, they're very similar. But ultimately, listen to your bodies. Remember how to learn how to eat less restrictively while choosing nutrient-dense foods more often, and honor your hunger and fullness signals in your bodies. Should be a good place to start. Thank you all for joining me today. Remember to listen to your body and do what's right for you. Stay fierce, and remember that your worth is not defined by your weight, but by all the amazing things that you do. And until next time, you can chew on that.